Is there something that you're saving up for in the future? Say like your education or maybe a car or even better yet, that perfect vacation. Well, that's what 7.3 is all about. We're talking about present value. How much should I put in the present as my principal in order to get to a future amount? Well, there's a formula that goes with this and it's right here. So PV stands for your present value, which means how much you're putting in as your principal and investing. FV stands for your future value. That's what I want in the future in order to pay for this fantastic vacation. Your I and your N are the same as the I and the N in compound interest. So I stands for your interest rate and N is, it, I mean, it has to do with time. Now, both of those, your I and your N, have to be um, altered depending on what the compounding period is. Okay, now you can also use this formula right here, um, and it's the exact same formula. All they did was they decided to write the denominator as a negative exponent instead, and then have a multiplication kind of formula instead of a division kind of formula. Now you're probably wondering, I mean, this sounds very familiar. Why don't we just use this formula, which is just the compound interest formula? I mean, isn't PV the same as your principal? And isn't FV, your future amount, the same as your A? Well, yeah, it is. I mean, these two formulas are pretty much exactly the same. All you did was, in order to solve for P, you brought this bracket over to the other side through a division, and it ended up in the denominator. So they are the same, but when you're talking about this type of, I guess, investment for a future amount, um, they like to use the PV and the FV instead. So this is the type of question that you could see. Max would like to purchase a new car priced at $30,000 in five years. How much should he invest now at an interest rate of 4.75% per annum compounded annually? Okay, so his future amount, I mean, he wants to buy this car worth $30,000. And we know that the interest rate that he's um, using as an investment is 4.75%. And this is it as a decimal. And then we also have our N, which is the number of years. Now remember, your I and your N are affected by the compounding period. And it looks like it's compounded annually. So we're thinking the number one. Okay, so you're going to get this interest rate once a year. So we're going to divide by one. And that means we're going to get the whole 4.75% in one shot. Also, he's going to get this interest once a year for five years. So you're going to take your five times one, and that would give you five. So he's going to get this 4.75% five times. You want to know how much he should invest at the moment. So we're going to put everything into the formula. And I decided to use a negative exponent formula just because I like multiplication. So here's your FV. You put it right here. And then your I goes right in there. And then your N goes right in here, and you just do bed mass. Okay, so addition first, right here. Your negative exponent, so you're going to go this to the power of negative 5, and then you're going to multiply 30,000. Okay, so we get this number right here. Now, I don't like to put another step right in here because... Um, it's going to require some rounding. So when you take this to the power of negative 5, usually people tend to round. And then when you multiply by such a huge number, a lot of answers become very different. So what I'd like to suggest is to just put everything into the calculator in one step and then get the final answer and round that one. Okay, so remember, we're talking about money. So two decimal places, and you want to round to the nearest cent. And then at the very end, since it's a word problem, you want to put some sort of a therefore sentence, maybe something very simple. So he should invest $23,787.63. Okay, number two, Cody is working to pay his way through university in two years. He plans to invest the money he has saved now in an account with an interest rate of 3.5% per annum compounded monthly. He hopes the money from the investment will provide $7,500 towards university fees. How much does Cody need to invest to achieve his goal? So again, we're given a future amount right here, and we want to know what the PV is, so the present value. It looks like his interest rate is 3.5%, so that's it as a decimal. And then again, it's going to be affected by the compounding period. So he gets 3.5% 
every month, which means we have to split it up into 12 little pieces. So each month he's getting about 0.29%. Okay, for all of those added up 12 times in an entire year, he's going to get that 3.5%. Then also his end's going to be two years, but since he's getting paid out that interest uh, 12 times a year, in total over the two years, he's going to get 24 interest payments. Now we're just going to put everything into the formula. So 7,500 right there as our future value. And then here's our interest rate. And then our number of compounding periods. And again, just bed mass, this plus this and then take that to the power of the exponent and times this and then we're going to get 6,993.67 okay so again I rounded so you want to make sure that you put the approximation dots looks like he has to invest almost about seven thousand dollars in order to get seven thousand five hundred dollars in two years All right, so how much interest would he have earned to meet his goal? As in, if he decided to invest the 7000 uh, really how much is he getting as some sort of a bonus to get to the 7500 What we're going to do is we're just going to subtract. Take the future value, subtract the present value, and you're going to get how much interest he actually earned. So he should earn $506.33 of interest.